I had a few different people recently asking me about fire management, how to manage fire, and people that wanted me to just make a video real quick to show, talking about fire management, how to manage a fire, maintain it, keep it going, that sort of thing. So, you know, some things I just want to go over, just kind of some tools that you need, some different things to keep close by. One of them I always recommend are some, some heat resistant gloves. Sometimes you've got to get pretty deep into your firebox. It gets super hot in there, especially if your hands and your skin aren't really used to it. Fire gloves come in handy for manipulating the fire. Got some tongs, just nice sturdy metal all the way through tongs. Be able to move the logs around, flip them, do whatever you need to do. Fire going, keep it, keep it moving along. And then I have ice scoop. I use the ice scoop for if I need to scoop out any ash or move ash around. You know, one thing to always think about is just your wood. A foot like this is really all that you need. I wouldn't go any bigger than this one. This one's about nine inches long. It's not my wood is you don't need huge splits you don't need a massive bonfire in here to create smoke and to keep heat going the thing that i've learned over, over time is that it's okay to have smaller splits smaller pieces of wood if you add in a split and it doesn't make a, a significant difference or it's not keeping your temp up you can always add more in however if you add a big huge split in there and it just makes your temps kind of spike out or peak out or whatever not much you can do aside from just kind of ride it out and wait for it to burn down so it's better just to start with smaller pieces of wood and add it incrementally one thing i think a lot of people make a big mistake on is they will try to overcompensate so when the temperature is too low they'll just shovel a whole bunch of wood into their fire you end up having the opposite effect where now you have just way too high temps the better solution the better option i feel like is Add less wood in at a time. Really try to keep your wood smaller. And when it's time to keep it going, add a piece of wood in and, and monitor it for a minute or two. And watch your temps. If they're not really changing or not doing what you need them to do, just add another piece in. But don't just throw in, you know, five, six, even two or three pieces. Like, just always do small amounts at a time. So you can kind of see in here, this is my fire. It doesn't need to be a huge fire. It just needs to be a fire. Right now, my smoker's going at about 260 with this fire. And one thing I like to do is just kind of flip the logs over occasionally. Really Really helps to keep the flame consistent so all the wood burning evenly when you do this keeps the fire keeps everything going smoothly the thing that i will do down inside the firebox down in here in the bottom that's where you want to try to keep a valley so you want to keep um, you, know, you can use your tongs to kind of do this to kind of spread make it so the air can flow underneath down in through that valley it really helps to keep the coals hot makes it so that your wood ignites quickly and faster one thing you don't want to have happen is you don't want to have logs sitting in here smoldering when they smolder you get these big huge dark puffy clouds of smoke that are going into your meat and it creates really bitter flavors not the kind of flavor you want you want more of like a clean smoky flavor and that doesn't mean that you want your smoke coming out of your chimney stack to be transparent you still want some color coming through it some blueing some grain you just don't want it to look like a semi truck or a diesel truck just like or their gas pedal and they're going down the road like you want it to be more on the clear side but just kind of consistent the main thing is you want it just consistent flowing through you don't just want a whole bunch of smoke just kind of hanging on your cook chamber. another thing too I reckon I always recommend is stick with one kind of wood pick wood that you like a lot pick a flavor that you really enjoy if you like oak stick with oak and just learn oak really well like I would recommend even just like a solid year just using just oak learn how to cook with just one kind of wood and then from there kind of start expanding and experimenting with other woods and seeing how they react I think one mistake a lot of people make is they try to go with all these different flavors of wood they switch from hickory to mesquite to oak to apple to cherry and all these woods act and react differently in a firebox it's important to just learn one wood and get really good with one kind of wood another thing you can do is on top of your firebox up here you can preheat wood preheat the logs get it so that they're ready to go into the firebox you know you want that quick ignition of the logs you don't again you don't want them to sit in there and smolder you want to make it so that when you get them in there they light almost immediately you know i'll go ahead and add this piece in then sitting up top and kind of drying out just a small little split laid on top there and you'll notice it's not really smoldering it's just going to catch real quick that's exactly what we want just catch them real quick and just keep it going another good tip i think is just you really have to watch your firebox got to pay attention to it don't want the fire to die or go out kind of like driving a car you don't run your car until it's totally out of fuel before you go get gas you go get gas before it's out of fuel so that way your car can continue to run same thing here this is our fuel source we don't want to run it all the way out till there's nothing left keep the fuel going so you can keep the fire going so just kind of keep your fuel in there so the fire can remain consistent for me i like to use my door here to control my temperature you know having it wide open like this you've kind of got a few a few things you kind of you always have to consider one the biggest one is airflow oxygen and airflow getting in here really keeps the fire going keeps it consistent when you're putting your logs in you want to space them so that they're about an inch apart 
because you kind of have like a uh, like a sweet spot, right? Like you want them to be close enough that they can work together and keep each other going and keep each other on fire and lit. But at the same time, you need space so the air can flow between them to get the log burning all the way around. We can use our door here to help control the temperature also. Of course, we want to have as much air flowing in here as possible to keep the fire going and keep it going strong and keep the logs just lighting quickly each time. At the same time, if you have like a windy day or if it's a colder day and you need to, you can always shutter the fire a little bit, close the door, and that'll help to boost your temperatures up in the cook chamber. I also found it kind of helps to reduce the amount of wood that you're using too because you just don't burn through it quite as fast. A lot of times if it's just ideal, ideal uh, conditions for me, my door is just wide open like this all day long. I don't even have a damper on my smokestack. That's the way I like it. I like to just kind of control through here. If yours has a damper and you want to control airflow through the damper on the, on the smokestack chimney, you can do that also. There's no real right or wrong. It's just kind of what you prefer. For me, I like to limit the amount of variables that I have. So my entire smoker is kept at a constant cook chambers at a constant, the smoke sacks at a constant. The only variable that I have to worry about is the firebox. That's the other way that I have mindset up is I, I focus on the firebox and want to make that my variable that I control. The other thing that I'll say about fire management is yes there is a science to it but there's also an art to it and because there's an art to it it's something you have to almost kind of learn by doing. It does take time, it does take effort, it does take some practice. Get out and just try it. Just do it you know. I can sit here and talk all day about managing fires. I could run a camera all day long and bore the heck out of you even more than you probably are bored right now. Showing you how I run a fire through the entire cook. Ultimately though, you've just got to kind of get out and do it and, and learn it and learn to manage it yourself. And remember these few things of don't put too much wood in there at one time. Keep your split small. Make sure you've got good airflow going through this so that they'll light, they'll ignite. Don't let anything just sit in there and smolder and don't let the fire go out. Just keep it going and just remember it doesn't take a massive bonfire to keep your temps up. It just takes a little fire, a little bit of a little bit of heat and it, it'll flow really well and work really well for you. I think what I'll do now is I'll just kind of show you guys the smokestack so that you can see what I'm talking about as far as that goes and see what that should be looking like and then we'll be about done here. That up here is what I was talking about with the logs and just kind of preheating them. The one thing to be careful of is of course this surface here is extremely hot. So two things to worry about. One is of course don't burn your fingers. If you burn them it's going to hurt. <laughs> So watch the logs, especially if you have a, a firebox that has thinner metal, it's going to be even hotter. Some of my previous smokers, like my one over here that I used to have, my Royal Gourmet, for thin metal, there was a few times I wasn't paying attention, and the logs actually caught fire on top of the firebox. The other thing, here's their smoke shacks. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see it, there is some, some puffing of smoke coming through there. Man, it's blowing right in my face right there. There's some puffs right there you can kind of see coming out, it's not super clear. It's not transparent, but it's definitely not just billing out smoke. If you can't see that, I apologize. There it is. It's the best I can do with what I got. 